thieves, vandals, gluttons. My children have gone by a number of names, but regardless, I think the robots need some protection from their grubby little children hands. When I get a chance to be in the shop, I much prefer to start working on the next project over cleaning up from the last one. That does leave the shop pretty messy though, and not really safe for kids. I could put a lock on the door or actually clean up like a normal person, or I could use some cool tech like Eva and actually create some shop defenses so the kids can't get in. Since kids are just human-shaped cats, then spraying them with water should keep them away. So today, we're gonna turn Eva into an AI-powered shop water defense to keep the kids out. The first problem we have to figure out is how to track the kids. And to do that, we're gonna use a Z2 from Stereo Labs. Tracking people inside of videos is kind of hard, unless you're using AI. And with AI, it's actually pretty easy. To keep this project out of the weeds so I don't spend too long working on it, I'm gonna be using a pre-trained network that comes with the SDK from Stereo Labs. That will already find people and objects and vehicles inside a video stream, which is awesome. It saves me the trouble of doing it myself. In future videos, I'm gonna be doing more deep learning and AI work. And if that's of any interest, make sure to subscribe so you get notified about those videos. The stereo camera will bring in a video stream and put it through the neural network. That will find the kids inside of the stream. That's already really cool, but it's only 2D. Now I had done something similar to that with OpenCV for the cornhole video. Watch that if you haven't seen it. That works well enough for stationary objects, but fast moving objects like kids, you're gonna need more information than just that. So that's where the stereo portion of a stereo camera comes in. How it works is it has two cameras, kind of like your eyes. Each camera sees a slightly different image. It will find the differences between the images and using that can actually figure out where that difference is in space, out in front of it, and it can measure that distance. If you do that with every single point inside of the two images, that'll give a measurement to almost everything that the cameras can see in front of them, which will give you a 3D view of the world around the robot. Now that the AI has said where the kids are in the image, and we also have a 3D view of the environment around, that includes the kids, we can merge those two and actually find where the kids are in space around the robot. The stereo camera is sending in video at 15 frames every second. That's a lot of data. And you would look at that and go, that seems like an awful lot of calculation to have to do to find kids in a frame. And you're right. Mythbusters a while back did a really good example of CPU versus GPU where CPU does a lot of sequential tasks really quickly, whereas GPU does a whole bunch of processing all in one shot. And that is exactly what we need for this project. We have an entire image coming in and we need to process the entire image in one shot. Parallel processing is something that video cards are really, really good at, or Jetsons. So I'm gonna be using a Jetson NX from Connectech, which is a normal Jetson NX, but it's in a ruggedized case with more connectivity like USB and ethernet. Now that we know where the kids are around the robot, we need to be able to have the robot move to point at the kids. To do that, we're just gonna be using ROS. There's a built-in ROS driver already for the arm that works pretty well. We're not gonna be using Move It though, or ROS Industrial, because this application is simple enough that we don't really need to worry about collisions or complicated motions. We've limited the robot so it can only move in a certain area. That keeps it safer for the kids and safer for the arm and it makes calculations a lot easier. Every time it receives an image, it will process it, find the kids, and find out where they are in space, and move the robot so that it's pointing at the kid. The final piece to this is the sprayer. I'm gonna use the head on my hose, which doesn't have a handle, it has a little knobby to control on and off, which makes it actually a lot easier to set up. 3D printed a couple little pieces that mount directly onto the head and use a servo to control moving that valve. Since ROS is easily distributed across multiple computers, to control this head, I just added a Raspberry Pi. 
It makes it easy for the Raspberry Pi to run Ubuntu and connect to the ROS network and just receive commands from other machines. The Raspberry Pi has GPIO pins with PWM, so it can easily control the servo. And the wiring is pretty simple. The arm we're using is a KUKA EVA. It's a collaborative seven axis arm, so we don't really need to worry about safety all that much. Also, you can program it directly using Java if that works for your application. The arm does have force feedback and measurement in every single joint. So you can start to do some really interesting force-based applications in the future. The defenses kept the kids away pretty well, but once they got on their bathing suits, it went from a deterrent to a toy, which also kept them out of the shop, so it kind of worked. In most cases, just putting a lock on the door is probably good enough for most people, but that's not what we do here. We have more projects coming up using different arms, different brands, as well as some mobile robotics projects too. So make sure you subscribe and check us out on Patreon to see what we have going on over there. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Say cheese. Cool.